One co-chair, Scott Bolden, former D.C. Democratic Party chair, and Steve Cortez, America First national spokesman. Scott, why should black voters support Biden? Well, he's super qualified, one. Two, he's got the long-term connection with Obama, and whether Obama's walking through that presidential door or not, he's got that connection. He's wrapping himself in it, and uh, Barack Obama was one of the most popular presidents in the history of this country, but super, super popular with African Americans. That doesn't seem like a lot to a lot of people, but that's more than enough, because politics and elections are about connecting with people, and they feel that connection with Biden. Horace, he said he earned their vote in South Carolina. Biden has. Well, a couple times he said he earned it, and a couple times he said they owed him. He was a little bit confused about it all. What's really clear is I haven't seen anything over the last four years that he has done that is particularly helpful to the interests of black America. He goes to the one state with the largest percentage of blacks so far in this lineup and then essentially says it's you have to decide if I get to go forward or not. And that's what this is really about. How, Does he how, get to go how forward? How do you explain why he's on a national level, as well as South Carolina, he continues to lead in the polls, one, but leading the well, polls in the regard Obama to African Americans? I think, the, I mean, this is why he kept Good going or bad, back to right. it mm -hmm. every. Every debate. That's all he's got, though. Well, every That's chance he's got. got. Okay, well, but Steve, hold on. I want to get to Steve on this because you look at the numbers tonight where they are in South Carolina. Biden's still up, but not by as much among African Americans, right. but still up uh, 10 percent. Okay, he's up 32 to 22. Uh, Sanders is up at 20 uh, 20 percent. We have a different poll in front of me, but South uh, this African American vote is 32 percent, 22 percent. Steyer 18, Elizabeth Warren 7. Um, is this is this possible at this point that Sanders could somehow jump 10 points and and tie him if this if these sure. polls are accurate among African American voters this is Biden's in South Carolina to lose and it has been for some time well, we would assume. But look, is it possible, Laura? I think yes. But this is, I think, the important takeaway, particularly for someone like me who's trying to reelect the president from this debate tonight. Normally, winning presidential messaging is about optimism on America, hope and change, make America great again, mourning in America. What we heard described tonight was a racist, dystopian hellscape that America is <laughs> by all of these candidates. I can't believe how much I've never seen so much pandering from a bunch of rich, rich elite whites toward my minorities as we saw tonight. Uh, so w whatever happens in South Carolina, they are dooming themselves for the election in November. Uh, because, by the way, the America that they described, one thing that really you know, crossed my mind as an Hispanic, the America they described, why are there millions, tens of millions of people around the world, most of them not white, clamoring to get to this country uh, mm -hmm. if, we, if we are yeah, the apartheid that South Africa that they yeah. described? Yeah, I tweeted that earlier tonight. It was a pretty um, negative view of things. Well, but if Coming Donald Trump the issue of race, if it was Donald really Trump, negative. Well, if Donald negative. Trump is over this dystopian uh, or this, uh, this dystopian jurisdiction, well, I remember Donald Trump when he was running for office and he did his RNC speech and he was very dystopian about the state of black um, state what, of America. What, remember where the state of race relations were in October of 2016? Remember where they were when Barack Obama was president? Well, he was driving that narrative though. It wasn't oh, Barack. It, was Trump. No, it, no, it no, wasn't no. Barack Obama. Okay, so now. Wait a second. Hold on. I got to understand this. I got to say. So the good economy now is because of Obama. And when Obama was president and race relations went down at the end of his term, that was because of Trump? God, well, Trump, wasn't black Trump people heads, he wins, that tails, he narrative. Loses. And I didn't say Obama, Barack Obama had a great economy. He turned over a great economy to Donald Trump, but he inherited an awful yeah. economy from, from Bush, too. But so you've got to concede that. But we had an African-American president for eight mm -hmm. years, yeah, right? And there During were a lot of white years. And white America, many portions of white and America. And voted for him. him. They did. Voted they for him. If it, weren't for, if it weren't for those voters, he wouldn't have become but president. Trump voters hated Barack Obama. Not because he's black. I mean, they didn't like the policy. Scott, wait, 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 Scott, wait. That's, some of the Trump the voters may not have all been, hold on, voters it may not have all been raced. Hold on. Some of the but Trump there were voters had of voted Trump voters for Obama were, before. I agree with you. Yeah. I didn't say it was all race-based, but there's segments of his voters that it is race-based. Oh, some it guy is. on Twitter talking about how yeah. he and the Klan were supporting Hillary Clinton. That doesn't mean anything. Scott, yeah, that is demonstrably. No, no, no. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. That is demonstrably false because that is demonstrably false. Yeah. The voters who made the difference in the upper Midwest, who switched parties, who either hadn't voted or had voted for Barack Obama, mm. and then voted.
voted for Donald Trump, for you to call those voters racist is ludicrous and well, factually not true. I didn't do it. I didn't do that. I, well, well, I did it. not do it. I said well, there was a portion of his supporters well, portion that were of, based on the race. Okay, there's a portion That's of irrelevant. Obama's voters who are probably sympathetic okay, to communist ideas. Trump I mean, well, but sure. the point is, you can do that with any group of, of voters. There's always some bad this, apples. So this, that what? doesn't prove anything. Hold on, guys. Hold on, rhetoric. hold on. I'm going to control this panel, unlike the moderators tonight. All right, Steve, here was Biden tonight on housing. Right now, if you live in a black neighborhood and you have the same exact house as the guy across the street in a white neighborhood has, your house is valued significantly less than the white. The same exact house. We've got to deal with the institutional Thank you, racism. Thank you, Vice President. Mr. Vice President. I know how you cut me off all the time, Mr. but I'm not going to be quiet Let anymore. I'm not going to be quiet anymore. Right. Okay, Horace, there was a lot of talk about institutional racism in a country like ours where we have seen historic gains for people across every ethnic and racial line, um, especially over the past three years. I mean, I think, you know, you have to say the economy improved under Obama, for sure, under that horrible situation he inherited in, and it got somewhat better. But it's gotten a lot better over the past three years, and for everyone, thank goodness. But doesn't sound like it tonight. What blacks in South Carolina are interested in is how many of them can buy a new car? How many of them are going to get a better job? How many of them are going to be able to do those kinds of things that they've wanted to do? Expand the house, put in a new bathroom. If you are Offer that as an agenda, you'll get their support. If you tell us that you want to throw all of this out with all of this crazy mm. Democrat socialism, <laughs> guess what? What you're going to see is some fall off. And there's no one yeah, I, making those real aren't Scott, going to hold on, Scott, that, I want to ask Steve this. Do you think that the Democrats tonight who wanted to take out Bernie or heard him? you know, in, the, in this campaign, did they really go at the substance of his ideas or did they just right. talk about his electability? Well, when they talk no, about how you, pay for how you pay for Medi Medicare for all, they did go to the substance. And when you well, attack him the on his prior, prior support for Cuba and the Sandinistas, that does. You may not think much of it, but I think America still cares about it. Did Buttigieg that. ask Steve Cortez, did Buttigieg, <laughs> Mr. Smarty Pants, Rhodes Scholar, did he, look at, uh, <laughs> did he look at Bernie and say, was Fidel Castro a dictator, Bernie? Was he a dictator? No, he didn't ask that question. Right. Right. No, exactly. Because he didn't want to get to the substance. Instead, what did they do? They race baited all night. And I think the reason they did that is they are trying to spread fear among minorities yeah. because they don't want to talk about the reality, which is that this economy is thriving for minorities in America right now. It's not just my opinion. It's theirs. 49% right. economic approval by Gallup among minorities. Now.